until they were tired and they sat long down long? and rested. Her eyes were tired. Was, was it the plastic you still had uh, over, have over your head? Or I don't think I don't think that. Yes, it was still over my head. They beat me until I printed. Do you know what they were using to beat you? They had buttons and uh, the rubber from the uh, vehicle tires. Yes, because my soles were electrocuted. And my genitals were also soaked with electric cable. The witness who said he still suffers health complications to ease the effects of electrocution at the NIA told the commission in his concluding remarks for the government to build new prisons because mile two is 100 years old and said should be abandoned. Saina Bujang for GITS News. Now 40 young aspiring entrepreneurs are currently undergoing a five-day training in small-scale businesses after years of training in various other skills. The project, which is funded by the Gambia government through the National Enterprise Development Initiative, NEDI, is aimed at empowering young people in small-scale business management as part of efforts to create employment opportunities for the Gambian youth. Jatiaz's Babasila has the rest of that story. The training is part of NEDI's commitment to empower Gambia youths and women through the provision of training in entrepreneurship and investment and also to give grants and loans to operate businesses. The five-day training will also expose the participants to business opportunities and how to effectively manage their businesses at the end of the training. Welcoming the participant, the executive director of PIA began his statement with an inspirational message and challenged the participant to utilize the opportunity in order to become successful entrepreneurs in the future. We have prepared you for two good years. We have prepared some of you for one year. You are all ready. So Nedi is the one that is preparing you, ready for market. Now we are going out to a very volatile environment. You'll be competing with so many other young people who have also graduated from other training TVET institutions. So our sister agency, NEDI, is here to support you and us for you to be able to present yourself in the market, in this environment, to the audience. And the audience are your customers, they are your clientele. How do you make yourself ready for them? How are you able to deliver quality output, quality products to them? How, do you, how are you able to organize your business? How are you able to plan yourself? How are you able to keep your records? How are you able to attract the attention of these people? Deputizing for the general manager of NEDI, Musa said he called on the participant to stay focused, saying the government has created a lot of opportunity for the young people in order to become productive members in national development. This is an opportunity. This certificate, some will want to ask themselves why the need for a training certificate. Because this is what will help both the government and the donors, the NGOs, the other partners, that if you are giving either grants or loans, you'll be able to manage them very well. I will also want to take this opportunity to let the youth of this country know that there are a lot of opportunities which have been created by the government of the Gambia. Other speakers include Mustafa Baji, the Deputy Director of NYSS, Abdullah Boja, and Musa Mbai, the Director of Planning and Program at the Ministry of Youth and Sport. For GRTS News, I am Baba Silla. Moving on, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat has concluded its 36th national convergence to promote the faith of Ahmadiyya. The youth conference brought together leaders of the Jamaat and believers from all walks of life to share a fulfilling spiritual atmosphere in a troubling world of uncertainties. Aminati Isanyang has the rest of that story. It is the closing of the 36th national annual youth conference of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. The Amir of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat Baba F. Tarawale said the Majlis Kuddamul Ahmadiyya has a great role to play in the socio-economic development of the Gambia, whilst calling on the youth to strive for excellence in their academic fields. As youth, you should always be good citizens and always be law-abiding, and should be at all times good ambassadors of this country, the Gambia. He went further to delve into the significance of peace and advised the Ahmadiyya youth to instill peace and law for each other. Your attitude should be that of brotherhood, peace and love. 
coach it for that. And that is what you should strive to instill deeper in yourselves and others, and that should be the way you live your everyday life. The president of the Ahmadiyya Youth Association, Ali Utarawale, spoke of the responsibility of the Ahmadiyyan youths. Unlike other youths of the world, the youths of Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat are very fortunate to be directly under the guidance of a rightly guided leadership in the form of Khilafah. The Khilafah that was prophesied by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than 1,400 years ago. The greatest prophet of all times, whose life and death we are all for the sake of Allah Almighty, and at all levels, his soul was melting for the good of Allah's creations. So much so that Allah Almighty Himself confer upon him the title of Rahmatul Lil Alameen, that is, mercy for all people. The closing also witnessed chronic recitations and other activities to mark the end of this year's annual national iktima of Majlis Kuddamul Ahmadiyya. Aminata E. Sanyang, Jiatiyas. And now to some health matters as the University of the Gambia on Monday convened its starting edition of swearing-in ceremony with 21 medical students taking the oath. As Sehjuf reports, the ceremony marks the formal assumption of duty by the graduates from the School of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences. My medical knowledge, My medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil rights this is the 13th edition of the swearing ceremony at the School of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences. Every year, the school organizes this ceremony for new graduate doctors who take the sacred oath of Socrates after successful completion of their training at the University of the Gambia. This wedding in ceremony presents a solemn but joyous occasion for medical graduates to be formally taken through the professional oath and become properly inducted into the medical profession as qualified medical doctors by the Gambia Medical and Dental Council. Today, UTG is adding 21 doctors to the pool of doctors in this country. As usual, these are another crop of highly, highly trained young men and women, comprising six females and 15 males. Hopefully, they will all stay. They will all stay. Stay and work to support healthcare delivery in the Gambia during these trying and difficult times. I sincerely hope that they will all promise to work in the Gambia at least for some years, at least for some years. Communicate with your patients. Your patients will look up to you for guidance concerning what they should and should not worry about. And be always ready to give the factual advice in a tactful way. To sum up, the advice is to be human and deal with your patients as human beings, not a particular disease entity. Honorable Fatu Kinte congratulated the young men and women for toiling hard to make a mark today. It is indeed a pride to be a medical student and an even bigger one to complete successfully and be called a doctor. As you line up today to receive your certificates, seven years for most of you is now like yesterday when you enrolled in pre-med. Yes, I agree, it was not easy, but through hard work and perseverance, you have made it. Medical graduate Fanta Fofana expressed the immense joy she felt after receiving her certificate. It's been a very long journey. Uh, at first it was supposed to be a seven year journey and then it ended up being eight and a half years. Um, it was accompanied with a lot of crying, a lot of stress, uh, a lot of hard work and determination. But Alhamdulillah today, uh, hard work has paid off. 
Um, my colleagues and I are very happy to be in this position today and we hope that we can serve our country to the best of our abilities, inshallah. This badge of 21 doctors adds more than 260 new medical practitioners to the healthcare industry. Seth Chouf, GRTS News. Let's stay with health matters as we examine the challenges opposed by cervical and breast cancer in the Gambia, which still remains the two most common cancers among women in the country. The disease has so far claimed the lives of scores of young women in the country, with many still lagging behind to be screened, treated and cared for. Mama J has details in this exclusive piece. Cancer, it's becoming a growing concern in the Gambia and cervical cancer has been in the spotlight in the country in recent years. But why is it so special? A question I put to Dr. Lamin Jaita, a consultant and general surgeon at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. Uh, this is a cancer that if we uh, put in effort to detect it on time, we can actually save a lot of women from getting cancer and eventually dying from that particular cancer. Cancer is said to spread through the body when it loses control of its own. But what are the causes of cancer? Dr. Abdullah Keita is an obstetrician, gynecologist and lecturer at the University of the Gambia. There are certain things we call them co-factors or risk factors that predispose some women more to developing cancer of cervix than to the others. And among those risk factors is Tobacco in any of its form, including cigarette smoking, people who sneak tobacco, people who take tobacco in any form is a recognized risk factor for a long time for cancer of the cervix. The other is, if you have other infections in your genital tract, they can predispose you to cancer of the cervix like gonorrhea, syphilis, they can all predispose you to cancer of the cervix. If your immunity, that is the body's defense, is reduced, like if you have HIV, you have diabetes, they can predispose you to cancer of cervix. If you start sexual activities too early in your life, it can predispose to you to cancer of cervix. If you have too many sexual partners, it can predispose you to cancer of cervix. According to health officials, cervical cancer is the second leading cause of death among women in the Gambia. The disease kills women in their prime or youthful age. Most, about 8 out of 10 of them would still be alive at 10 years. So it goes against the thinking that if somebody has cancer, it's a death sentence. No. The most important thing is being able to detect the cancer on time and then making sure you get the right treatment. Statistics show that 53,000 women in Africa die of cervical cancer every year, an average 154 women per hour. According to WHO 2014 report, Cervical cancer death in the Gambia was at 54 or 0.40%. But the good news is that cervical cancer is highly treatable, with a cure rate of over 90% if detected early, according to cancer experts. However, health officials observe that many cancer patients in the Gambia seek medical attention often too late. Treatment is simple and easy with very little complications. So every woman who is above the age of 30, who is actively married, can walk to the screening center and get sc screened. Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, Banjo, SOS, Bafro, um, Afrimed, Brikama, Yundum, SL, Base, all have screening centers. In 2019, the government of the Gambia ruled out a massive immunization campaign of young girls across the country to protect them from cervical cancer. One organization that is complementing that effort is the Cancer League Association the Gambia, a group of organizations that is dedicated to raise awareness on cancer. Ajidafe is the chairperson of the association. We did a fundraising and uh, we uh, yes, we needed about $15 million. Uh, unfortunately, we were only able to raise $1.2 million. Um, the fundraising event that we did, uh, which after all the proceeds were actually uh, accounted for, we raised about $1.2 uh, from one night. Uh, the Minister of Health of the Gambia. We're here 
to work with you. We're here to support, to complement your efforts. The organization makes best use of Pink October, a month-long campaign dedicated globally to raise awareness on cancer. Mama J, GRTS. Cancer, it's becoming a growing concern in the Gambia and cervical cancer. Well, an exclusive piece out there by our Mama J. Now, moving on, the Sukuta Youth Development Committee, together with the Village Development Committee, has convened a youth forum at the community's lower basic school. As Fatu Diba reports, the forum discussed challenges confronting the youths and, as well, means of solving associated community problems. and Village Development Committee an opportunity to have a face-to-face -face dialogue to discuss a wide range of issues affecting the youth of Sukuta. Issues of unemployment, mental health and drug abuse as major challenges forms the center of discussion. Now we're able to register the youth committee. We're able to uh, work with the uh, VDC to make sure that we are not lacked or we're not left behind when it comes to decision making or to take part in the development of the community. So today we're here to bring the youth together so that we can know the problems that they are facing for us to have a solution for the problems that the youth are facing. Addressing the gathering, the chairman VDC, Babu Kacham, described drug abuse as an impediment to the growth of young people. He encouraged them to desist from the harmful practice and venture into skills in addressing issues of unemployment. I just want to advise young people, stick on to something that you know is going to be productive. Uh, Let's learn some more skills. Uh, let's not always think about it for actually we have to go to the back way to get to Europe. I think these are things that are affecting us. I mean, you are all talented, intelligent, you can do a lot of things on your own. Mental, mental health um, problems are global. But um, in, a, in, a, in a Gambian context, uh, they, are, they present very, very challenging um, situations. For example, drug and alcohol misuse amongst young, young people in the Gambia is increasing. If you went to the one and only hospital in the Gambia, mental health hospital in the Gambia, which is Tanka Tanka, you're bound to come across many young people um, uh, enduring what is called drug-induced psychosis. It's a kind of psychosis, as a result of taking drugs, you became mentally unwell. So there's a lot of those cases in the Gambia. Various speakers took turns to encourage youths of Sukuta to take up responsibilities in development initiatives in the community and their personal growth for economic independence. Fatu Diba for GRTS News. And still on community development, the Network for Development of Cloro and Tunjina, a community-based non-profit organization over the weekend, staged its maiden cultural festival at Cloro Village in the Combo East District of West Coast Region. The initiative, as Janketura reports, is meant to educate young people of the two communities of their culture and reflect on the life of Kadikebe. <laughs> The cultural event, among other things, reflects on the history of the late legendary Kadikebe. The maiden edition of the cultural festival, organized by the Network for Development of Kuloro and Tunjina, a community-based organization, aims to strengthen existing unity within the two communities of Kuloro and Tunjina in the West Coast region. Among the organizers is Farmer Barry, chairperson of the organization, underscored the importance to educate people on the true life of Kadikebe. We have been hearing about the story of Kadikebe, but we want to reveal the real story of Kadikebe because what has been said before was not the real story. So we came as a team gathered today here to reveal the importance of uh, Kadikebe's uh, story. The Alcalo of Tunjina, Kadija Tuture, highlighted the significance of the program while revealing the historical background of the two communities. According to her, Cloro was established by the settlers of Tunjina, who were first settlers to migrate from Faraba in Combo East, see for the urge in people to emulate their cultural values. The theme, revealing the true story of Kadikebe, was narrated by Botobaji, an elder in the community, recalling the history of the late Kadikebe, daughter of Ibrahim Kebe, was born in Bondo village and married to Wandambu Sane of Tunjina. Many believe that Kadikebe was poisoned at a program during her youthful days, leading to her demise. 
This narrative by many Giret, according to Baji, is untrue and false, saying it's meant to misinform people on the true life of Kadikebe. Baji went on to add that Kadikebe was one of the most beautiful and famous at the time and met her untimely death during childbirth. She has five siblings, of which Jenaba Kebe, fondly called Mba, is the only surviving one in Bondo village. Other speakers include VDC Chairman Omar Ba, Chief of Combo East Bakari Sanya, Combo East National Assembly Member Lamen K. M. Konta and Sadibu Jame, respectively, dilated on the significance of the occasion. For them, it is important for the youth of the two communities to know the history, culture and ways of life of their late legends. The chairman of Brikama Area Council, Srifo Sonko, spoke at length on the significance of the program urging youth to unite for the progress of the two communities. What we are calling for, people are going to try to practice it. Number one, to try to embrace peace of that we are having in the Gambia here. The Gambia is a very peaceful country, and thank God, alhamdulillah, that we have a very peace, uh, peaceful president. That is, is uh, His Excellency President Adam Abaro, who is a peace advocate. I think that is what you know, Kulor and Tunjina are also calling for. The day also witnessed different cultural activities by different ethnic groups depicting cultural norms and a visit to the late Kadikebe's graveyard at a place called Tumbungoto, where she was led to rest. <laughs> the cultural festival is part of initiatives to safeguard the long-standing peaceful and cordial relationship existing between the two communities. Now that the true story of a legendary Kadikebe has been revealed, it is expected that through this program, Historians will be able to narrate the true story of the late Kadikebe for the younger generation. The organizers assure that the cultural festival will now be an annual event. For the news, I am Jenko Tui. Now, the people of Nyanja district in the Central River region have successfully staged the second edition of their cultural festival over the weekend. The festival is meant to promote unity and culture. Our CRR correspondent, Mudla Minsani, tells us more. A unique celebration of time and history, putting culture on the spotlight in the Central River district of Nyanja, an important social element that particularly comes to life during the area's annual cultural festival. Eventful festivities mark what has always been Nyanija's biggest exposition of culture, community and solidarity. The second edition of Nyanija District Cultural Festival comes at the climax of a difficult year, but organizers were determined to make a resounding success. The event brought together hundreds of people from across 33 communities in the district with a view to promoting unity and culture and additionally harness the area's potential for development through education and agriculture. We are interested in promoting um, a culture of peace among the people of Nyanija because in Nyanija we have Fulas, we have Mandinkas, we have um, Wolofs. We also have a minute percentage of Sereres. But we do not want to see any differences or distinction when it comes to these different ethnic groups within Nyanija. Our intention or our agenda is to see that everyone who is from Nyanija is united with a common force towards um, contributing towards the development of the district. And then equally as a district association, we have in our agenda to make sure that we at least uplift the welfare of our um, citizens or the welfare of our people in Nyanija. The significance attached to staging such an event clearly surfaced in the colorful opening ceremony graced by scores of dignitaries and community elders who took turn to address young people. This is very significant and exciting because it has brought people across Nyanija to one platform, something that has never happened, and they have displayed real culture and tradition. So I encourage all the young people here and the elderly to be united for a common goal that is the development of the area. The event can surely foster unity among people in Nyanija because all of us here are interacting. I also want to inform you that taking care of the environment as captured on the theme of the program 
is very important because that will make the people healthy. Important. Environment be do ne ke ne ba na sun dun da di na ba. Nyani jasri traditions came to light in a rousing performance by the area's different cultural groups. Yeah, so we just see that one day we say that all of us we are staying here. So let us try, we are, all of us we are full and from Nyanija. We should try and make it one group and make peace so that we can bring peace at Nyanija. So we try to make the group and call it Fede Bankara. Of course, I'm very happy, more than happy, because I came to my district and performed, my people was happy. So I want to just make my people to be happy. So I'm very happy today. The exciting display provided a real test of culture showcasing a spectacular exhibition, reviving century-old traditions. I feel more than the world happy to be part of the cultural of Nyanija, the people of Nyanija outside and inside the Gambia. All of them are stakeholders to make sure that the program is well organized and is, I mean, succeeded. Festivals like this one gives communities and people here the chance to unite and strengthen closely knit ties that have saved their societies from inception. Odulamin <laughs> Sane reporting for GRS News from the Central River region. And still on cultural matters, scores of participants have converged in the provincial town of Basse for the 8th edition of the Fulbe Africa Cultural Festival, the annual event which seeks to revive and preserve the rich Fulani culture as well promote regional integration was attended by people from across the sub-region. Our URR correspondent Saidu Kamara covered the two-day event and files in this report. And history putting culture on the spotlight in the central river district of Nyanija, an important social element that particularly. <laughs> this is the eighth edition of the International Fulbe Africa Cultural Festival, and for the first time, provincial town of Basse hosted the event. <laughs> glamorous night showcasing the rich Fulani culture which attracted celebrants from all over the Gambia and the sub-region including Ghana, Niger, Sierra Leone, Nigeria and Senegal. The annual event seeks to revive and promote the rich Fulani culture among the younger generation as well as promoting peace and unity through cultural diversity. The theme for this year's celebration is Daroden Danden Plago, meaning let's strive and safeguard Plago, with the slogan Pulla for Kopulla. The night long festival witnessed a variety of performances depicting with Fulani culture and traditions. Scores of celebrants dressed in cultural attire were entertained with music and dance by renowned Fulani artists from the Gambia and Senegal alongside other activities. We have got one decentralization. It was our plan eight years ago since we formed this association to decentralize it, to go to where Fulas are, where the roots are. So Basse being the case here, um, the only place called Fuladu in all over the world, Fuladu, is here in this region. So we deem it fit to come home to showcase our culture so that other people will take pride of their culture. Because as Full Bay Africa, we are promoting cultural heritage, we are promoting our culture, we are showcasing our culture, we are also um, dealing with other tribes, we are dealing with other tribesmen so that they can also be proud of their culture. We saw European coming here and learning their, our culture, taking it out, showing it in movies. So we want that for us to do that. Our elders have done their bit, they have teach us, they have, they have, they have took us to school, they have shown us our culture, but it is dying. The reason why it is dying because it's not written. After the colorful cultural night, the participants convived the second day for the conference where Bambe Balde, who was the invited guest speaker from Kolda in Senegal, gave a lengthy lecture on the importance of preserving the Fulani culture. The governor of URL Sambaba commended Fulbe Africa for the important initiative. 
whilst reminding the participants of the need to embrace and preserve their culture. Participants described the eight editions as very educative whilst commending the organizers for staging the event in Basin. The International Field Africa Cultural Festival continues to grow bigger with its core objective of promoting peace and unity as well as promoting regional integration. Sedu Kamara, reporting for Jared News from Base, Upper River Region. Some interesting cultural display out there. And uh, moving on, the visiting sheriff community of Sheikh Mahfouz Foundation concluded their latest national prayer with a visit to Birkama. The delegation, which prayed for the people of Combo comes amid uncertainties that continue to grip the world with COVID-19 inflicting economic challenges and obstructing growth, leaders of the delegation say it is prudent to clear the path with prayer to address COVID-19 and some other problems in on some other problems that people in the Gambia continue to grapple with. Fatou Mulushi reports. The community of Sheikh Mahfouz Foundation on Saturday climaxed their national prayer with a visit to Brekama. The intention to pray for the people of Kumbu comes amid the uncertainties that continue to grip the world. With COVID-19 inflicting economic challenges and obstructing growth, the leaders of the delegation say it is prudent to clear the path with prayer among the other challenges that people in the Kumbu region continue to face on a daily basis. Scores of people gather to listen to the sermon of the people believed to be descendants of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Vast in prayer and religious knowledge, the sheriffs advise the people to let God take charge in order to alleviate the current difficulties and unreasonable obstacles meted on their persons for their improved livelihoods and way of life. As human beings are believed to be spiritual beings, the Imam of Brikama, al Haji Sankun Ture, used the opportunity to thank the sheriffs for their goodwill saying they came to Britama on their own accord with the intention of praying for peace and tranquility in the community. The Imam says even though they are not surprised by the noble gesture, they extend heartfelt appreciation to the sheriffs for extending prayer to the community. <laughs> The Alkali of the community, Al Haji Bakari Dimbo Santa Bojan, says the prayers delivered during the Friday sermon was unprecedented. He thanked the sheriffs for their foresight and willingness to always deliver such precious gifts to the Muslim community whilst assuring them their warmth reception throughout their days in Brikama. The sheriffs concluded by advising the people to continue honoring their leaders and religious heads for a smooth path and everlasting peace. Reporting for Jatis News, I am Fatou Elika Mulushi. Time now to go for a short break. We'll be back with sports news. Do stay tuned. RTS weekday news with me, Omin Jai, and now to some sports. As the Gambia Football Federation held its annual general meeting during the weekend to discuss with delegates their activity report and financial statement for the year 2019, Farmer Abaji witnessed the convergence at the National Technical Training Center in Yundum and has the details in this report. The Gambia Football Federation fulfills another constitutional requirement as it presents team delegates with the 2020 activity report during the body's annual general meeting. A quick scrutiny of the document, and delegates unanimously adopt the GFF activity report. 
The August body reflected on current achievements made in local football management, laying new plans ahead for 2021. Earlier this year, signed a memorandum of agreement for understanding with the Saudi Football Federation. Both agreements are aimed at formalizing the bilateral relationship between the Gambia Football Federation and the two federations concerned. Key among the two agreements are cooperation, cooperation in coaching, refereeing, and administration, women's and, women's and youth football development, infrastructure development, test matches, and training camps for the Gambia senior national team and other categories of the national teams, club licensing, prof prof professionalization of the domestic league, and SCN visit. A proposed increment in the league prices for male and female division one and two has been put on the table with winners' price set to move from $300,000 to $750,000 for the first division male league and $300,000 to $700,000 in the female first division. Division two prices will also move from $100,000 to $350,000 for the winners. At the end of the day activity, team delegates say their thoughts on the AGM. When I looked at uh, the financial issues uh, that the GFF presented, uh, they've done a lot of good work in other areas, but there are still some areas uh, whereby significant improvement needs to be put in, whereby the control mechanisms needs to be looked at, and uh, that's my take, and this is why I, I pointed out those areas for them to look at it, because, uh, because uh, this is for the development of football. Finance is something that is very critical. If you look at their financial statement, um, especially the financial position, which is the balance sheet, there is in, in serious imbalance between their current assets and then the current liability, which was raised because it's a concern for the going concern of JFF. And the answer they give was they are aware and they are also working on it. And the excuse they also give was the government was not uh, keeping in, especially when it comes to the maintenance of national teams. But they are hopeful government will come into that area. So that's a serious concern that I raised, and then I'm still concerned to the, uh, about the going concern of um, the GFF in terms of liquidity for their liquidity position. The 2019 GFF financial report outlined $71.7 million as the current financial position of the Federation. The date for the commencement of league matches has not been announced, but fans are hoping that Gambian football will start in early 2021. Farmer Abaji, GRTS News. And from sports, we go straight to some international news. Now, presidential and legislative elections have ended in the Central African Republic on Sunday. Campaigns preceding the elections were marked by violence between government troops and rebels. And this is the first election since a peace deal was struck in February 2019. President Toret President Todera is seeking a second term and has accused his predecessor of trying to mount a coup. More in this report. UN peacekeepers and Rwandan soldiers patrolling the streets of Bangui, a sign of the tense atmosphere surrounding Central African voters as they headed to the polls on Sunday. Yet in the capital, many seemed reassured by the strong police presence and looked determined to make their voices heard. While the vote unfolded peacefully in Bangui, the same could not be said about the rest of the country, where several incidents were reported. According to UN officials, armed rebels seized election material, threatened and intimidated voters, and prevented several polling stations from opening. Thousands of voters also did not receive their ID cards in time to cast their ballot due to the dire security situation. Yet as polls began to close in Bangui, there was a sense that the worst had been avoided. The week preceding the vote had been marred by a series of violent incidents, including an attempted coup, rebels seizing the country's fourth largest town, and military interventions by Russia and Rwanda. 
On Sunday, many expressed hope the election could mark the start of a new era of stability for the Central African Republic. Matters we head to Nyami, where voters have casted their ballots this Sunday on a poll that could become African nation's first peaceful transfer of power between two democratically elected presidents. Former Interior Minister Mohamed Bazoum, the ruling party's candidate, is considered the favorite to succeed incumbent President Mohamedou Isufu, who is stepping down after two terms of five years each. More in this France 24 report. <laughs> Stepping down after 10 years in power, Mohamedou Isufu cast his ballot on Sunday as Niger readied for its first peaceful democratic transition since gaining independence in 1960. A historic day which the outgoing president hoped would mark the start of a new era for the West African country. I hope that this alternance of democratic, this first one, will be a stone of pour d'autres alternances afin de consolider notre processus démocratique. For the next president of Niger, the question of security is likely to remain a central issue as the country continues to grapple with a bloody jihadist insurgency. To the west, Al-Qaeda and Islamic State militants regularly carry out attacks against soldiers and civilians. And to the east, Boko Haram fighters remain firmly entrenched along the border with Nigeria. On, 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 on le sait tous, nous sommes menacés de partout et que l'on veut le plus cher que la paix revienne au Niger. L'avenir du Niger que j'attends, c'est la sécurité, la santé, le progrès et la démocratie. For Niger's 7 million registered voters, security isn't the only issue that matters. Many hope their next president can help redress the economy in a country where over 40% of the population still lives in extreme poverty. Stepping down after 10 years in power. And still in the internationals, European countries have begun a mass program to inoculate the people against coronavirus. It is said to be the biggest vaccination campaign in the history of the European Union. The elderly and frontline healthcare workers were the first to receive the dose, which came following a surge in cases with a more contagious strain of the virus now detected in some parts of Europe. More in this report. Year old Morissette is the first person in France to be inoculated against COVID 19. As the French government targets care home residents and medical staff in its first phase of injections. It's a day for all those who have left their peau in this truc là depuis des, des, des mois. Je pense en particulier aux soignants. This, as across Europe, a coordinated start to the bloc's vaccine campaign gets underway. In Italy, the EU country worst hit by the pandemic with 71,000 dead, this 29-year-old nurse was the first to receive the Pfizer vaccine. Con profondo orgoglio e con grande senso di responsabilità che oggi ho fatto il vaccino. Piccolo gesto ma fondamentale per tutti noi. The head of this Rome hospital described the moment as the beginning of the end. Oggi assistiamo un colpo durissimo al virus, è un colpo veramente duro che speriamo che sia un colpo definitivo, ma è una grande battaglia che stiamo vincendo tutti quanti insieme, l'Italia e l'Europa. In the Czech Republic, Prime Minister Andrzej Babis was at the head of the queue, hoping to calm fears and hesitancy around the vaccine. Na jedné televizní stanici jednu paní, která říkala, že si počká na Babiše, tak proto jsem se rozhodl jít příkladem a dneska se nechám tady v nemocnici zaočkovat, protože tam... Some EU countries, including Hungary, Slovakia and Germany, began vaccinations a day early on Saturday. With a population of 450 million people, the EU has secured contracts for more than 2 billion vaccine doses and plans to inoculate all adults during 2021. And that's the news from Banjul. But before we go, a recap of our top stories once again. President Barrow has Monday continued the second phase of his Made the People tour within the Greater Banjul area. The 19th session of hearings of the Truth Commission has Monday continued, with more political victims appearing to give their testimony on alleged torture meted on them by former agents of the state. 
the School of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences of the University of the Gambia has Monday convened its 13th edition of swearing-in ceremony for 21 medical students. In sports, the Gambia Football Federation has convened its 2019 annual general meeting during the weekend, discussing their activity and financial reports with delegates. In the internationals, voters in Niger have casted their ballots this Sunday on a poll that could become Africa's nation's first peaceful transfer of power between two democratically elected presidents. That was all in this edition of the Weekday News. We thank you for watching and bye for now.